I think it's fair to say that FIFA 22 so far has been kinda dead, as there's no real hype for the game at the moment, which is just one month after release. So to enjoy your career mode safe a bit more, I have several tips for you in this video. If you go in and enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to not miss any other career mode tips. Now let's get into it. To have more fun in a career mode, you have to start at the beginning. Choose a team you genuinely like to play with in FIFA or you genuinely like or enjoy watching in real life. Choose a team that you think has a couple of fun or interesting players in their squad that you want to try in a career mode. There's no point starting a career mode if you don't even feel a little bit attached to the club you chose. One thing I always do when I'm not playing a certain career mode is to just take a bit of a break or FIFA. Just doing something else for a week might just help you feel more excited when starting a new save. I don't rush into new saves as I don't want to quit every career mode two days after starting it. I look around at several clubs or players and see how they are doing in real life. When you see a decent team doing badly in real life and being in a relegation zone, you might just find yourself starting a career mode with that specific team to try and keep them in the league in career mode and take them to glory. To follow up on that, it's very important to create storylines. I would recommend to watch one of my first videos to see the full explanation of what I mean with that. You basically have to think of certain stories regarding your club or certain players and use those in your career mode to get yourself a bit more involved and attached with the save. If you don't do this, you will just play or simulate every game without giving any thoughts regarding if a new signing is playing well or if it is becoming a flop for example. Or if it's time to replace a club legend who has been at the club for 10 years as your club is battling relegation currently. You can write certain storylines down on a notepad or something and have that alongside you whilst you are playing the game. Or you can just keep the storylines in your head and evolve each storyline with each match that goes by in game. Adding on to the tip of choosing the right team, doing some research of your chosen club before starting the save helps too. It gives you more history about the club and you will feel more connected to the club already. Also knowing if your club won the highest division of their country a couple of years ago or if they haven't won a big trophy in their entire club history helps too as you will realize throughout the career mode save how special it is if you finally win a trophy with that club for example. Knowing whether one of your players is close to breaking the club's all-time goalscorer record or is about to break the record of most appearances can also help emerging yourself more into the save and could make an ordinary mid-season match a lot more special. This tip can also be in combination with the tip of the storylines I just mentioned. One thing that I see a lot of people doing is that they simulate a lot of their matches, which they might prefer to actually playing the game. But it stops you from getting immersed into the save and attached to the club and especially the players. I personally like to play most games and simulate easier cup games against second division sites for example. I also simulate some matches against teams in the relegation zone if I'm a mid table or higher rated team. If I just got promoted with my team to another division, I make sure I play all the games. For me, it's important to have a right balance between playing and simulating matches in career mode. If you play every single game, you might feel like it takes too long to get into a next transfer window or a next season. That's why I sim Carabao Cup games and some easier FA Cup games, if I'm playing in England for example. And when you are building a team only using youth academy players or regions, then I would highly recommend to also play most games, as you will have some of these players throughout the entire career mode and want to feel a bit more attached to them when you finally win the highest division of your country or win a championship. Champions League. One reason why people simulate a lot of the matches in career mode is because they don't like the gameplay, which is everyone's personal opinion of course. I personally don't dislike the gameplay this year as it's a lot more difficult to score and you really need to break down the AI's defense in different ways. Of course it's not perfect and it never will be, but for most of the times I just try to ignore the game's gameplay issues and just pretend like one of my attackers missed a big chance or my defender made a big mistake, instead of constantly blaming the game which is no fun for anyone. Thinking like it's your player's fault can also create mini storylines, which I touched on previously in this video already. I normally play an ultimate and there's a good variation of some easier games and some more difficult matches where I end up losing quite badly. Most people find it quite difficult to jump to a higher difficulty and stay within their comfort zone. But this could also ruin your career mode as things could get too easy too quick. So if you are playing on world class for example, I'd recommend to jump to legendary and keep playing on legendary difficulty for a couple of matches in a row. Yes, the first few games you will most likely lose, but after that you will slowly see progress in the results, getting draws and eventually winning games again. For quite a while after jumping to a higher difficulty, you will notice a variety of results and it might not be fun to lose some games, but it's also not fun if you win every game on a lower difficulty. If you feel like you are playing on a good difficulty or you play an ultimate and even find that too easy, then I would recommend to use sliders. Now it might be quite difficult to find the right slider settings. When playing the game without sliders, I would recommend to really focus and take notice on what you think is too overpowered and should be less 
or the other way around. If you think pace is still too overpowered, lower the sprint speed and the acceleration sliders a tiny bit and keep changing them until you are satisfied with the sliders. Don't forget to also check if you think only your player's pace is too overpowered or if the AI's player's pace is too overpowered as well. So you change them both. I haven't figured out the best sliders to use in this year's career mode just yet, but I would recommend to watch Gutsy's video in which he shows sliders that he uses to make the gameplay more difficult, realistic and fun. As I normally do quite a lot, I find myself using the same formation most of the time. I build a team around 4-3-3 attack formation and just use that formation and the same tactics throughout the save. But what I did do in FIFA 21 Queer Mode is to change my formation and tactics each season. This way you have to do some position changes in your squad, sell some players that don't fit into the team anymore and sign a few new players that do fit the new system. Changing the formation and tactics also helps to keep the career mode fresh as you have to adapt to a new playing style every season and before you know you are already halfway through the season again. One important thing to keep your save enjoyable is to make transfers. Even if you are trying to keep it somewhat realistic and don't want to sign too many new players, I would recommend to still sign at least a couple of new players. Staying with the same players for too long might get quite boring quickly. If you are a few seasons into your career mode and think some of your players have good R1 stats, be sure to still look at your players quite critically and see if they are just decent and not great or if they can take on the next chapter of where the club is going, which can be to win the league for example. If a player isn't that special or might just not be good enough in the long run, think about replacing them. You don't have to replace every player instantly, but maybe spread it out throughout a couple of windows. Then signing replacements for these players will keep your career mode fresh, as you will have to adapt to use these players and try and fit them into your squad. Regarding signing replacements, I would highly recommend to use the global transfer network that's within career mode already. I never use websites that show potentials of players, but only use the GTN in FIFA. With the global transfer network, I often set up my scouts to move to certain countries and leagues to try and find some players that fit in my team through the instructions tab. A few days or weeks later, they most of the time come back with a lot of hidden gems that I've never heard of. I then sign some of these players, use them in my team, and some of them end up as my favorite players to use in career mode. Of course, you will still see wonder kits like Bellingham or Haaland pop up in your global scouting network reports, but I normally just remove them as I don't like signing the highest potential talents all the time. Even though the global transfer network has a couple of bugs and sometimes returns with plays you, that you didn't ask for, it is the best way to sign fun, new hidden gems that you have never heard of. The last tip I will give you is to make sure you don't burn out. With this, I mean to not play too much of your new career mode in the first two days or so. There's nothing better than a feeling of a fresh new career mode that you are very excited for, so why not try and keep that feeling for as long as possible. If you play the entire first season in the first two days or so, that feeling will go away quickly and you will feel like you've had enough of that save instantly. And no one wants that, so I would recommend to limit yourself to playing a certain amount of games every day to keep the exciting feeling you have when coming home from school or work and starting your career mode again. If I haven't mentioned a tip that you would suggest to other career mode players, then let us know in the comments. I hope you find the tips I gave you helpful and will use some of them to make your career mode more fun or more enjoyable for a longer period of time. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel to not miss any other career mode tips and I will see you at the next video.